we would like to welcome you to this online worship service. Today in our scripture lessons, we will be hearing about how God, his forgiveness is boundless. It has no limit that changes us and also makes us to be more merciful and forgiving to others. So we appreciate you joining us as we raise our voice to this forgiving and great God of ours. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul. 
all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have compassion for the sinner as a father has compassion for his children. Heal the weakness of your people 
and save us from everlasting death, that with the saints and angels we may praise and glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, kids. Today our Bible truth is good speech can honor God while using our tongues. Have you ever taken a look at your tongue? Looks very similar to this. It's a very powerful muscle in your body, but it can be as dangerous as sparks that start a forest fire. And that's something we've been seeing a lot of around here lately, especially in Washington State and Oregon and California. The book of James in chapter three speaks about that. And it says, likewise the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body, corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Your tongue can do some very good things, but also some very bad things through what you say. We can say things to another person that really hurts them, like calling them names. Sometimes you might sash your parents or tell a lie, and that's not good either. After saying something hurtful or mean, we might realize what we have done. We want to take those words back, but it's too late. We can't take those words back. It's like this toothpaste. Let's see if we can put the toothpaste back in the tube. I'm going to squeeze it out onto the plate, and then I'm going to have my assistant come up, and he's going to try to put that toothpaste back in the tube. Hello, Pastor Dave. Hello. Well, boys and girls, do you think I'll be able to do it? I'll try to pick up the toothpaste. I don't think it's going to go back in there. That is hard. I don't think I can do it. No. Certainly not. Saying unkind word to another person is pretty easy to do. It's easy as squeezing toothpaste out of this to toothpaste tube. We would like to take those words back, but we can't take them back. Perhaps you've had someone say unkind words to you, and you know how that feels. Have you ever said something that hurt someone's feelings and heard them say, you take that back? You can't take it back, can you? Once you have said it, it is said. You can't put the words back in your mouth any more than you can squeeze this toothpaste back into the tube. That is why we need to be very careful about the things we say. The Bible says, he who holds his tongue is wise. The next time you brush your teeth and squeeze the toothpaste out of the tube, remember this lesson and aim to speak kind words to whoever you talk to during the day. Please pray with me. Dear God, we know that our words can bless others or hurt others. We know that we can't get our words back once we have spoken them. So help us through your Holy Spirit to make sure our words are always spoken in love. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. The first lesson comes from the 50th chapter of Genesis. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgressions of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now... Please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and for your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the 18th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii and seizing him, he began to choke him saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and he pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. I invite you to join with me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Jesus, can you part on to you? 
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, as we look at God's word, we will be asking, is there a limit on mercy? Uh, we can also put it this way. What do we do when we are hurt? How are we to react? Now, before we get in, into the Bible, I, I would like to talk about one of the things that I appreciate about moving from the Midwest to now living in the Northeast. And one of the blessings is that there are hardly any mosquitoes. I think this year I've slapped two mosquitoes, but um, you know that is actually a lot more than I have the previous years. That would not be the case if I was back in the Midwest. There are a lot of mosquitoes, especially you know about two weeks after a, a, a thunderstorm. You would see these swarms of mosquitoes, and when mosquitoes bite, it hurts and you react instantaneously. You slap, you wanna kill those buggers. You hurt, you react. And I would venture to say, you do the same thing if a mosquito bites you. But how do you react when people hurt you? Do you respond, get angry, or maybe do you, do you push it aside or, or push it down inside you? If you were to look at children playing in a, a play yard and notice a, a small child getting knocked down by another child, you know, they react usually fairly quickly. They stand up and the first thing they want to do is push down the child that knocked them down. It's the rules of the play yard. And it's not just in play yards. We may say it's the rules of hockey. Uh, hockey is, is a sport that I enjoy watching every once in a while. It's fast paced, it is exciting. But every once in a while, you see someone who is crushed hard to the boards. You know, it hurts. It has to. And they remember that. And so later on in the game, they might seek to do the same thing to the person who hurt them. And if not in that game, in a game that is upcoming. Yes, we respond to being hurt by oftentimes seeking to hurt others. Now, normally we don't do this physically. And I'm, I'm so glad that we don't. But lots of times, I would say, we are hurt more physically by what people say. And what happens when someone has hurt us? Well, oftentimes we react. If you were to look on Facebook, if you were to look on Twitter, if you were to look on the internet, um, look in books, you could see how people have responded to other people who have cut them down. And it's often, you know, they seek to do the same thing to them. And we can't just blame it on social media. You know, if you were to take away the internet, you know, people still get angry with each other and cut each other down at their homes, at workplaces, in the university, and actually in the community. This is nothing new. Well, most of us actually deal with hurt in more mature ways. You know, we don't respond automatically and quickly when we have been hurt or wronged. It's not like a mosquito. You know, we are more mature, we are patient. But sometimes we do react. Or sometimes we allow that hurt to continue to be in us, maybe like a sliver which we have gotten into our hand. Uh, we don't remove it, it's still there, and, and we can continue to go about our work, but every once in a while, if, if our hand gets bumped, or we, we touch that area close to where the sliver is, you know, it brings back the memory of that, that pain, the sliver going in and, and that it's still there. And I think that is how it is sometimes with the words which have been spoken. They do impact us. So what do we do when we have been hurt, when we have been wronged? 
when someone has said something against us that, that we don't like? Well, this is not a new question. In fact, in the gospel lesson for today, Peter brings this question to Jesus. He asks, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Now, before we look at, at Jesus' response, there's another question to ask. Why did Peter bring up this question? I don't think he did it because he was doing some academic self-study, you know, because he knew he was going to be an apostle and that, that he wanted to have, uh, you know, a paper on this. I believe that Peter had been hurt and it was bothering him. How long do I have to continue to put up with this person who hurt me? And notice also who he said it was that he needed to forgive. How often will my brother, when he speaks about brother, he's talking about a fellow disciple. He's not talking about the Romans. He's not talking about other Gentiles. He's talking probably about another disciple of Jesus. And he's mad. He's upset with regards to what they have said or, or maybe what they have done. And notice as, as Peter brings that question before Jesus, he actually answers it up to seven times. You know, Peter is much more generous than those who play baseball today in our society, which lots of times gives that rule, three strikes and you're out. Yet Peter's assumption is that there is a limit. You can't just keep forgiving someone over and over again. Sooner or later, your patience, your forgiveness, and your brotherly love need to come to an end, right? Isn't that the way of the world? But Jesus challenges Peter. And he does it by encouraging him to look at things from a different perspective. Of course, Jesus responded to Peter by saying not seven times, but 70 times seven. But then he went on to tell a parable to illustrate the point that he is making. The real thing to consider is not how many times we must forgive others, but how much God has already forgiven us. Jesus would like us to live in a world where we do not keep track of other people's wrongs, but that we continue, continue to show mercy to them. And that's pointed out in this parable. We read, Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold and his wife and children and all he had and payment be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. Out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him, forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay his debt. Now, as we look at this parable, we see a contrast with regards to how the king treated the first servant and how that servant then treated his fellow servant. But to understand really um, how this parable is shocking, it's important to see how much of a comparison can be made between the death of these two people. To begin with, this servant owed the king an astronomical amount of money, 10,000 talents. Now, you and I probably think 10,000 talents, we don't deal with 10,000 talents. What does that mean? Well, that is the equivalent of 230,000 years of wages. That's right, 230,000 years of wages. If you saved up all the money in that time span and gave it all to the king, you know, that servant's debt would be paid. So you can almost see that, that the response that the, the servant gave to the king when he said, pay up, he says, be patient with me and I will pay you. You know, it was ludicrous. You know, after a year of working, he could say, you know, I've, 
I've done one year, but, but hang in there. Be patient with me. I've got 229,999 years left, and, and I'll, be, I'll be in the clear. You know, he was not going to be able to pay off the debt. No way. But the king had mercy and forgave him. But then when he saw his fellow servant who owed him 100 denarii or about four months uh, work of, of wages, you know, he was incensed. Pay me what you owe me or else. And he did throw him into prison because he was not able to pay. Just think about the amount of money that he had been forgiven. What would take 230,000 years to make as compared to four months' wages? You know, the story from a human point is just ridiculous. But from heaven's perspective, it is equally as ridiculous to stand beneath Christ's cross and still not be willing to forgive other people. We want to know how many times we must forgive others, be patient with them, show them love. How many times, and God, again, shows us how much he has loved us in his son. As we look at this parable, I think it's also important to realize that it applies first and foremost to families. Peter asks about a brother. He's not talking about a Roman or a, or a Gentile at that particular time. He was probably thinking, I think at least, about a fellow disciple, how they had hurt him. God encourages us as we look at our earthly families and also as our church family that, that we are to be merciful to others. This parable also uh, points out that, that things are not always going to go well. Things are going to be done which, you know, other people are going to get upset at. You know, we are going to speak words which will, will hurt other people at times. And what is our attitude towards others? We are to be merciful. I think it's also important to, to take this parable in the context of all of the 18th chapter of, of St. Matthew. Remember, Jesus spoke about caring for all people, even the smallest. And he was concerned that, that you not cause anyone to sin. And if someone has sinned against you, you seek to restore that sin. So Jesus isn't saying, you know, it's okay to sin and, and do just whatever you want. But what he's talking about here is being merciful to those who come and ask for forgiveness. You know, we have no choice but to forgive them because that is how God has treated us. Yes, to be sure, we can go back to a kingdom where people have to pay their debts, what they owe us. But who wants to go back into that kingdom? I do not want to go into a place where I have to pay my debt for my sins for how I have transgressed against God. You know, I'd never be able to pay it off. And neither would you. And so God encourages us to remember how much he has forgiven us. And then let that be our guide as we interact with our brothers and sisters in Christ, with our earthly family, and seek as, as best we can to be merciful and kind to them. That we don't react to the hurt and pain that we have received, like mosquito bites, slapping them or pushing them away, but that we act in love, just as God in Christ has forgiven us our sin. Amen. Good morning. I am Gabriel Mignalek, and I serve as Trinity's music director. I would like to take a moment to let you all know about the music ministry's plans for the fall season. The situation amidst the COVID-19 pandemic unfortunately disrupted the normal routine of the ministry. But as St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. With faith in God's guidance, I am announcing that the Bell Choir will start rehearsing Tuesday, September 22nd from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. COVID-19 safety protocols of masks and social distancing will be in place during rehearsals. If you are interested in helping with this ministry, please send an email to trinitybellinghammusic at gmail.com. Rebecca Manyalak, our Bell Choir Director, will address any questions you may have.
Traditional in-person choir rehearsals that I direct will still be on hold due to safety reasons, but we will work on producing choir music through virtual means through a recording process. Sheet music and audio recordings will be available online and at church to assist your learning of your part. If you have a smartphone, you can record yourself or arrangements can be made in an individual basis to record you in the church sanctuary during the week. Please send any questions you may have to trinitybellinghammusic at gmail.com or you can just call the church office. I pray that God move you to lend your voice and talents in making musical worship possible during these trying times. Thank you. Once again, we would like to thank you for remembering Trinity Lutheran Church in your prayers and how you continue to support the ministry which is going on here. And we encourage you as you are able to continue to donate online or send your offerings to the church office. We continue now with our prayers. Almighty God, as once you kept Joseph from evil and brought good from his suffering in Egypt, deliver us by your grace so that we may learn patience in trials. Teach us to be slow to judge, quick to forgive, and steadfast in love for you and one another. Merciful Lord, teach us to show such compassion to others that we may welcome the stranger, love our neighbor in need, and be attentive to those vulnerable to temptation. Help us to serve the refugee and give us opportunity to share your gifts with those who live in poverty and want. Mighty God, give wisdom and courage to our elected leaders that they may pursue justice, seek peace, and protect life from its natural beginning to its natural end. Bring an end to the threats of terror and violence in every place. Open all nations to the voice of your word. Holy Lord, lead us to pursue reconciliation, that we may stand before you forgiven and united in faith. Help us to follow your way and to walk together in harmony of life. In our prayers for today, we remember those communities that have been ravaged because of wildfires. And we pray that you would strengthen the people who are, are fighting them, that you would be with those who have been replaced by them, and that you would bring relief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to lift up Gloria, Ellen, Jolene, along with John, Lou, and Mike. We lift up Henry and his whole family, Spiro, Steve, and Mary Jo, along with Malcolm, Priscilla, Roberta, Sandy, and Susie. Lord God, you know what is going on in the lives of these people as well as those whom we name in our hearts. Be with them, grant them relief, and be a rock and refuge for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
for joining us for worship. As we heard in, in God's word and in the message, we live in a kingdom where Jesus rules by mercy and grace. And I pray that as you live out your life, mercy and grace would not only be received by you from what God gives, but that you would also give it to one another. Go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>